All right, so picture this with me. I'm sitting in the Chick-fil-A drive-thru, getting my number three combo with extra crispy fries and a small chocolate shake. Watching the Black Magic, well, listening to the Black Magic camera announcement update. He pulls out the Ursa and he says, all right, the update is gonna be about the Ursa Mini Pro. And I'm like, okay, well, we've got the Black Magic Pocket 6K. So what would make complete sense? A 6K Ursa, right? So we start at UHD and I'm like, all right, you know, let's get back to 4K, come on, pops back 4K, good, we got that. Pops back to 6K. I'm like, perfect, exactly what we need, a 6K Ursa, right in line with the rest of the lineup. And he pops back again. And I'm like, okay, I mean, the R5 just got announced. It makes complete sense why we'd get maybe an 8K Ursa Mini. That's awesome. Pops back even more to 12K. 12K. We are getting a 12K Ursa Mini Pro. Like, I don't even know what to say. It's incredible. And then they start showing the frame rates that you're going to get in this. So you've got 12K. I've got the spec sheet, we'll go through that in a second. He pops down a clip of 8K at 24 FPS, looks incredible. Then he goes, oh, you like high frame rates? How about 110 frames per second in 8K? 110 frames per second in 8K raw, internally. I just don't understand why people sleep on black magic. And then they're like, how about 4K at 240 frames? You like that? And I'm like, yes, thank you. The whole production that Blackmagic does when they update their lineup is so chill and so low production value. It's just like the one guy, Grant, I think is his name, just sitting there looking at the camera. It's very, it's like in this dull gray thing. And he's like, yeah, here's the new uh, Video Assist Pro. We got like a cheaper model and stuff. You guys probably, you'll, you, might, you might like it, you might not. And then he's like, all right, let's talk about the Ursa. Here's the Ursa. This is the G2, the 4.6K, which is what I'm filming on right now. And he's like, you like that? It's kind of cool, I mean, but actually Psych whips it around 12K on the side. And he's like, what do you think? And it's just like complete, and he's like telling the camera guy, he's like, hey, zoom in and show him how many resolutions he, <laughs> this thing has. It's just, it's comically underproduced. And it's like, they're so relaxed about it. It's insane. Now we don't have all the details and everything, but I mean, they did announce the pricing and this thing is going to be under $10,000. Under 10, 9995. Bravo. I mean, this is a legitimate, legitimate production camera that could be on any big budget Hollywood set, any of them. So it's gonna come stock with a Airy PL mount, but it will be interchangeable. And he said for a pretty inexpensive price, we'll be able to get an EF mount pretty cheap, which is huge because most of my glass is EF. Now, another huge thing is they're switching from the Bayer sensor. It's no longer gonna be that. It's going to be a new sensor design that's gonna allow you to switch between sensor resolutions, basically scale in on the sensor itself from 4K, 8K, and 12K in camera. One big unfortunate thing is it looks like according to this, there will be no ProRes option. It'll just be B-RAW, but I shoot in B-RAW anyway, and I think it's incredible. So no real downside for me there. So the sensor size is 27.3 millimeters by 14.25 millimeters. It is a Super 35 sensor, like I mentioned, a PL mount with interchangeable EF or F lens mounts. 14 stops at dynamic range, so one stop less than the G2. Your shooting resolutions include 12K DCI, which is 12,288 pixels by 6,480 pixels. Then you also have 12K 16 by nine, which is 11,520 by 6,480. You have 12K 24 to one, which is 12,288 by 5,112. And then you have 12K anamorphic, which is 7,680 pixels by 6,408 pixels. Then you also have 8K DCI, which is 8192 by 4320. And it goes kind of down from there. You've got super 16 6K, 6,144 by 3240. And then you've got 4K DCI, 4K anamorphic, things like that. So the different frame rates, you've got 23.98, 24, 25, 29.97, 30, 50, 59.94, and 60 supported. It also has 12G SDI ports on the back. Now they've moved a couple things around. The actual USB-C port is now on the back, which is huge because on the G2, you can't actually close the screen and record straight to SSDs, which is what I do. So it's a little bit annoying. Again, you have those high speed frame rates I talked about. So you'll be able to shoot 12K 17 by nine full sensor at 60 FPS, 12K slow-mo 
8K up to 110 frames per second, 4K up to 110 frames per second, that's in the DCI. Then you have 8K 2, 4 to 1, and 4K up to 140 FPS. Then you have 6K at 120 and 4K at 220. I said 240 earlier, 220. <laughs> that is nuts. And you still have those built-in NDs, you still have the little screen on the side, you still have that, all that super easy to use Blackmagic user interface, which is fantastic for everything. It can shoot to two CFast 2.0 card slots, two SD card UHS-2 card slots, or one USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 expansion port, so you can record straight to SSDs, which is what I would do if I had this. <laughs> and then you can shoot in B-RAW 5 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 18 to 1. So it looks like they got rid of the 3 to 1. And then you can shoot in the constant quality Q0, Q1, Q3, or Q5. Also, they introduced a new SSD recorder. It's like the version 2 recorder. It looks really nice. You'll be able to buy that extra. I think it's about 400 bucks additionally. Uh, so that's something you definitely will be able to have. The spec sheet is just absolutely insane. Again, go check it out for yourself. Go check out the website. It's got all kinds of specs over there that you can read. I'm not going to read all of them. It'll just bore you. But again, the highlights, 12K, 60 FPS, 8K, 110 FPS, 4K, 220 FPS, all on a new sensor that can automatically scale itself according to what default resolution that you're in. It's just insane. I don't know how they do it and all of it for under $10,000. And all the other accessories that work on the G2 or the G1 work on this, the side handle, the eyepiece, the monitor mount, all that kind of stuff, all exactly the same. Blackmagic is just one of the most slept on camera companies. I see everyone using Canons, Reds, uh, Nikon, Fuji, all these different types of things. Why are more people not using Blackmagic? It's, it's, it's some of the cheapest stuff you can buy for some of the most quality image. I said this in my Pocket 6K review, like if you want the best possible image for the best possible price, you get a Blackmagic. There's just no way around it. Now, because it is a cinema camera, there's no in-body image stabilization and things like that. But again, you're using this in a production sense. I'm using it to make YouTube videos, so you can use it on lower budget stuff, but this is made for cinema production. And that resolution in itself proves that point. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below what do you think about this insane announcement from Blackmagic. They're the absolute kings of just dropping stuff like this so nonchalantly. Let's have a conversation about it down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new tech video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.